What do you think is the reason or motivation for turning people in the US against each other? The same as it is anywhere. Divide up the little people to maintain your grip on control and keep fucking them while you live a life of luxury. As long as there has been money and power this has happened and the formula is as old as the written word. America's unique deception is to appeal to people's sense of hope that anyone can make it. Yeah, no that's not true at all unless you find something a rich asshole isn't involved in yet. Good luck on that. There are, haves, and, soon to haves Marco Rubio on camera while going throughout his rich neighborhood. The so-called elites have everything to gain from turning worker against worker, poor against poor. This way they won't focus on who's pulling the strings let alone question why the filthy rich get to stand above the law, are allowed to accumulate obscene levels of wealth, and can legally get away with not paying any taxes whilst pocketing public monies. Or worse. In the meanwhile, the rest of us is one paycheck away from starvation and actually, risk getting fucked dry by the tax man the second we step out of line. Getting more clicks than the next media site. People don't read news stories that say, most things are good. There are just a few people in this city going crazy. Nobody clicks on that. They click on half the country is in rebellion and millions of people have died and look at these numbers about COVID deaths even though they're not related to the disease at all, truth in reality gets in the way of fear mongering and attention whoring. Then, unfortunately, the people who actually trust those things for some strange reason accept it as reality and act on their surroundings in that way, leading to a self-fulfilling prophecy. Election in November. Bingo. Which by the way we've heard asterisk asterisk very asterisk asterisk little about since the second the pandemic started. A few months ago, Bloomberg dropped half a billion dollars on ads effectively making what seemed like every other commercial on TV a Bloomberg campaign ad. Point being, it was business as usual for it being an election year. Endlessly annoying ads playing on repeat. Then the pandemic hit, then Bernie dropped out, and ever since the unofficial Democratic candidate became Biden, it was as if they called a timeout on the election. Has anybody heard Biden speak in public recently? At this time in 2016, we were up to our eyeballs in Hillary, Bernie, Republican nonsense. Now I don't know what's worse, being bombarded by nonstop political BS, or hearing almost nothing about the election at all. Greater than has anybody heard Biden speak in public recently? Last time they let him speak in public. He told a black man, you ain't black unless you vote Democrat. Hate is a motivation. Think about it. And if you're really simple-minded, you can feel better about yourself by thinking that there are entire groups of people who aren't as good as you. Yes it is my faction that truly holds the moral high ground unlike those inferior deplorables. President Lyndon B. Johnson once said, if you can convince the lowest white man he's better than the best colored man, he won't notice you're picking his pocket. Hell, give him somebody to look down on, and he'll empty his pockets for you. Distractions. A divided country can't focus on one thing and solve it. The security of governments in places like Russia and China is bolstered when the US is divided. The CCP, for example, will never be content with a democratic state that is more powerful. It's a constant existential threat. Then there's the fact that all media everywhere gets clicks from conflict. The media's full-time job is to find fissures and divisions, real or imaginary, and try to exploit them and get people fired up and tune it for the next episode. I feel as if it's like a Trojan horse. USA too powerful for any nation to destroy, except for USA destroying itself, stoking existing flames. The emotions are very real, but the ones initiating are only trying to take away from the message. It's much closer to midnight than any of us will ever realize. Only in hindsight will we be able to clearly see. The phrase, hindsight is always 2028 will have a whole new meaning. The news tends to escalate the situation by hyping up what is happening. 
most notably for political gain. Add a death or social tensions for race, sexuality, gender and what else would end with a country? Divided into two. If you can convince a group, the larger the better, that their plight in life is the result of others you build extraordinary hatred and revolutionary aspirations to create an environment that would be capable of accepting and facilitating a great deal of change to the current societal structure. It's true but, are those new structures effective? I believe some people want the society and economy to move in extremely socialist direction. I'm not certain that this drastic change is achievable and easily maintained. I don't think they are effective. No, I think American society is one of the greatest societies ever created in human history. But I do think there are a number of people in a number of places who are motivated enough by the prospect of changing society for what they would believe to be for the better. Who don't seem to bat an eye over the cost of their methods for getting there. In many minds exists the logic of, look, if we really want change, then it's okay to exaggerate how evil this current society is. Maybe we are stoking fires, but even if those fires become out of control, it only serves to strengthen the message that a big change needs to be made. It's evil stuff, really. Although I'm not saying that this is a pervasive conspiracy, I just think it's some people maybe not caring about the scales being tilted. Edit. If I were forced to assign a motivation, asterisk that is, distraction from the corrupted practices. If people are busy fighting among each other, they aren't going to give a shit about what you do about passing a draconian law until they notice. Way too late as it's active. My guess would be people don't believe in nuance. They only believe in the enemy. Your actions are justified no matter what they are so long as it's against the enemy. I think the country is a tinderbox. In large part due to COVID-19. And George Floyd's murder was an igniting spark that gave voice to a lot of anger, pain, and frustration. But I also think that an age-old trick of the wealthy ruling class is to turn the working class against itself so that it's not targeting them. This is why, when there are times of economic stress, the blame is usually put on poor as dirt immigrants for stealing or gerbs. A country divided cannot stand. They can control us easier and slip stuff under the radar to destroy our freedoms because we are too busy being outraged to notice what they've done. Control. If people are fighting each other, they aren't fighting the government. If you have the people fighting each other, then they aren't watching what you're doing. America isn't allowed to have a shared culture anymore without being called racist. It's a misconception that we are more divided than ever. The 1960s was worse. Well, during the Cold War, the USSR had a campaign to start a race war in the US. So a lot of the events and reporting could be driven by foreign powers like China and Russia trying to create chaos. Watch former Governor Scott Walker tell Diane Hendricks about his divide and conquer strategy. Pretty much their strategy across the board in the GOP. If everyone is pointing fingers at each other for starting stuff, they're not gonna band together and point fingers at the actual perpetrators. Pitchforks people versus torch people convince them they hate each other. Divide and conquer. Eisenhower warned of the dangers of a too powerful military industrial complex and we are now witnessing the results of that power. Communities can be divided. Jobs can appear, disappear as a reward or punishment and the NRA can feed on the fear, discomfort, and uncertainty they help to create structures in the brain that are the same in a shark or a fish. 1. Nucleus accumbens, which drives addictive and reward-seeking behavior, leading to greed and uncontrollable wealth accumulation. Another, right amygdala, which produces hate, fear, anger, disgust. My group is the best group, and belief perseverance, weaken the country, making competing countries more powerful in comparison. Russia definitely operates on this principle, just as the USA did to USSR. Social media, could you elaborate? I think more of it as a tool not a motivation. 
not the other guy, but I get it. Social media provides a voice to extremists that they never had before. As such, it's easier to radicalize people now than ever before. The ruling class has the power, but the working class thousands of times larger than the ruling class. To prevent the working class from gaining power the ruling class creates and exacerbate divisions. So the working class will fight among itself. I really don't think that rich people are unified enough to do this. Nor could I see them doing all of this without a massive leak. They don't need to be unified, it's just the natural way things work with a ruling class. The other thing that bugs me is that I see a lot of the division caused by people talking a lot about how bad the ruling class is. Where they come into contention with people who are more status quo. Even if I was willing to believe that somehow they did create the vision and cover it up, there would need to be a group of people for them to come into a clash with for it to be effective. True if you convince the working class that their enemy is those that employ the monsieur, and that their fault is the result of the ruling class. In other words their success is beyond their control. I think it's human nature to be competitive and mean. And it's a constant battle to steer it the other way. I always try to be fair and kind. But at the same time I could be thinking the opposite. To collapse society so you can rebuild it how you want it to be. Easier to take the bread if you accuse one group of stealing crumbs from the other manipulating their attention so the population gets weaker and less likely to either resist when attacked or even realize it. One of the inevitable results of democracy is that partisan power bases learn to rely on divisiveness as the source of their power. In the US, we have two big parties that are almost identical on the real issues they care about. So they get us to bicker amongst ourselves over issues they don't care about in order to distract us from their crimes. It's been going on sign the early 1800s. Maybe longer. Media, political parties or big data companies that divide people into target groups can earn their money more efficiently. It's all about control. Pandemic is starting to lose its effect on people and people want to be able to go out again. Because we've flattened the curve and that's what quarantine was for. So now, the government is losing control over we the people. So they ignited a race war Minneapolis has already called in the National Guard and set a curfew. My best guess, because it's incredibly hard to determine these things, is to consolidate power. It's a lot harder for the people, lowest common denominator, to stand up against those at the top tat or stripping them of their rights. Power. There's a lot of money in outrage. There is definitely not a lot of money in peace. Being lucid and balanced and admitting that the world has nuance to it. For example, most people would not click on a CNN article about the president celebrating his birthday. How lovely and happy his children and grandchildren were and how tranquil it was for him to spend time with a monsieur we just as a culture don't tend to want to read about good news for other people. Now, change that headline to something about the president being spurned on his birthday by his own kids. Then you want to click. Then you want to see how bad he has it and you want to peek into the drama. Journalists' jobs isn't to educate you, bring you facts or any of that other idealistic nonsense that's peddled. It's to bring you what you want and are likely to engage with because the alternative is joblessness and bankruptcy. So they bring you the drama. They craft and package it in order to have max appeal. They encourage you to keep following their updates. They'll make it shareable on social media so you can spread it and show all your friends that you're up and provide a comment on it. They make bank. Their advertisers get in front of a lot of eyes. Some person makes a shirt with the latest hashtag on it and people buy up the shirt to show how with it they are. It all comes back to the fact that that we make it profitable for them. Damn, if not everything when boiled to the root is money the root of all evil. Power and control, better to reign in hell than to serve in heaven, that's the mindset. Better to have their frustration and anger targeted at each other than at the real culprits behind. All the pain and suffering, 
Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.